Yeah, hello. Um, my name is uh, Christian Wilmens. I'm a geographer based uh, at Institute of Geography in the University of Cologne. Um, and I work within the CLC 806, Our Way to Europe, interdisciplinary research project uh, concerning migrational um, patterns of the analysis of migration of modern uh, anatomically modern humans from Africa into Europe. But today I want to talk to you about a, a very um, exciting uh, new project. I started with uh, colleagues from the uh, Museum of Cultural History uh, at the University of Oslo, um, uh, uh, which is about um, the analysis of uh, pollen data and uh, inferring paleoenvironmental information uh, from these uh, data sets and relating them to Norwegian archaeology. Um, yes, as a, we um, this project was started um, um, last year in uh, autumn, in uh, late October, uh, I visited uh, uh, these colleagues in uh, Oslo uh, at the uh, University Museum, and um, we um, with uh, we've uh, how to say um, found or got a big data set uh, about um, um, Norwegian. Um, Pollen cores created by uh, um, um, by a paleontologist um, now retired uh, during more than 30 years of research, and um, uh, yeah, I will uh, tell you in this presentation how we um, yeah made this uh, data usable and then um, made analysis using R and open source GIS. Uh, Packages and um, uh, yeah, uh, what what are the further ideas uh, in this project? So um, the analysis is um, based on, um, as I, as I said, uh, um, um, fossil pollen samples, which are these um, uh, several data sets. I will talk in just a minute more about. Um, and we apply a technique called modern analog technique. I will also detail more uh, in just a few slides. Um, and um, for this, we need uh, data sets uh, from modern uh, point samples, so recent point spectra, uh, uh, which we can uh, link to uh, modern recent um, climate parameters for this study. We just um, concentrate on uh, mean annual temperature and mean annual precipitation. <coughs> so this is a, um, a data set uh, which we use for um, the modern pollen samples. It's a data set published, uh, 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 open accessible. Uh, it's called the European Modern Pollen Database. Uh, it has around 4,000 uh, recent pollen samples distributed in mostly Europe, Eurasia, some in Northern Africa too, um, to which we, uh, as I said, linked uh, mean annual uh, temperature and mean annual precipitation um, yeah, parameters from today. And here you see a map of the locations of the sites uh, we work with from uh, this um, data set created by Helge Hoek during his research career. He, um, yeah, uh, I would say, thankfully already worked uh, in the 70s with computers and stored all his pollen counts in a computerized form so we can access them in a, a software which is maybe known to a few paleontologists, uh, which is a really uh, like a domain specific software called Telia for uh, working with this kind of data. Uh, um, in the end, these data sets are more or less like uh, tables um, 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 and can then uh, yeah, be used in other uh, software packages like um, R after some conversion steps. Um, 
Yeah, all in all, these are 302 sites and um, more than 1,800 files. There are um, several files per site, like um, absolute point counts and relative point counts and some graphics also, like um, which uh, Helge created um, according to the data sets. So, um, for this first study in this uh, project, uh, we selected a set of uh, eight sites, as you see on this map, um, which we uh, thought have a good uh, variability in terms of uh, environment, like um, lower altitudes, higher altitudes, coastal, more inland. Um, this is just uh, because it's still an early stage, um, we, we, we still developing this method and it's quite laborious to um, make this data, get, get them into uh, work uh, in other software packages. It's, uh, it's, we, uh, I was uh, until now not able to automate this uh, fully, like uh, automatically reading them into R. We, uh, it was, um, several manual steps like uh, opening this uh, Tilia software which is uh, um, fortunately all, also available in a free version and then uh, really copy pasting this table out of this software into an uh, open office calc uh, spreadsheet and then from there exporting it into a CSV and then I can work in R with it. And, um, also, the um, species information, the names, uh, were often given in like Norwegian language, sometimes also in, um, or, or most of the times also in Latin language, but in a little bit different um, <coughs> spellings, uh, like um, capital letters and non-capital letters, something like this. Uh, so I had to like, um, yeah, not normalize them to fuse them to bring them uh, having exactly the same name because I work on these names to compare uh, the data sets. So work, work like this really laborious work had to go into this so less analysis work. As I said we, we just started in uh, last autumn so it's uh, not even half a year I work with this data and uh, do lots of other things too but uh, um, yeah, here's uh, the um, metadata for the sites again, which I introduced on this map. So you see there's a spread of altitudes, and what you see here are the chronology, the oldest dates from the age model of each core. To, to each uh, pollen core, there is an age model uh, based on 14 C datings, uh, which is uh, also given in this data sets. Uh, uh, and um, here you see the number of samplings in this course. These course uh, have different depths and uh, also like different sampling resolutions. Um, normally, uh, Helga sampled it in, uh, about in every five centimeters. Some cores are sampled in like every uh, 2.5 centimeters or in like 10 centimeters or even for other resolutions. So. Yeah, um, as a software, um, um, we, we use um, R, which is much discussed on this conference here, and in particular the package Rioa, which I don't know really how they spell it, like wine or something, I don't know, and it's uh, cited from the documentation, it's uh, like a, a set of um, algorithms and methods uh, uh, designed working for this kind of data, quaternary science data and in particular also like uh, um, stratigraphic data which are all of us. Um, and from, from this set of uh, many uh, algorithms available, we uh, first focused on modern, modern analog technique. So there is a potential to use other techniques with this data too later on. This was just uh, arbitrary choice to uh, first use this technique and could be any other method. So shortly explaining about uh, how modern analog technique works. This is an example, um, yeah, a stratigraphic plot of uh, a pollen uh, 
core. You see here the age from recent to like how, how the oldest age in this core is, like here in this example, a bit less than 12,000 years. Um, you see the different species and their relative distributions. Um, through this, this technique um, looks um, into the data set of uh, modern pollen samples, which we see here, and computes similarities and uh, takes out, in this example, the six most similar um, um, samples in this data set and then com derives from this uh, set of six samples for which we know the um, recent climate parameters uh, through the similarity this um, value for um, for this parameter in this case mean annual temperature and you can clearly see from this example here you see uh, climate change happening it gets warmer at uh, around uh, 10,000 or a bit more than 10,000 years ago with uh, like which paleo environmentalists can uh, well link to uh, the known paleo environmental history so um, um, what from as an example first example from our data you see this is really apparently not can't be really correct because it's too like wiggly but it's the first step so and um, I just want to present here that we are able now we have this data we have them in relative plots and can apply this technique but we are now in the stage of improving this application of the technique and looking into all the errors which uh, I possibly have uh, produced during the workflow like from data transformation, naming the species of the points correctly, um, and uh, yeah, maybe other problems that could have occurred to um, yeah com come up with more uh, accurate um, paleo environmental history. But you see here we derived these two parameters, and we have some results for them. The um, for all these um, sites, I uh, did the, the mean, um, yeah, um, how to say, the error margin for precipitation is about uh, 10 to 15 uh, in millimeters per month in, um, in mean. So you have a range here from 55 to 57 um, as the value, and if you add to this a margin of uh, 15 in each direction you see where the arrow um, uh, where it could be instead in terms of the arrow for temperature it's a bit better it's like uh, two three in some worst cases four the margin but it is more accurate because also the scale is of course smaller so um, this first one was uh, as you see here um, the most southern one at the um, coast and uh, also lowest altitude. Um, the second place is more um, up in the uh, mountains and this, uh, because of this colder, you see different uh, um, species distribution, different spectres. And I, I really don't want to go into interpreting actual uh, Data here, I just present our current stage of this project, which is not really, really old. When we wrote this abstract, we were maybe a bit uh, optimistic to have more uh, reliable data to present, but I really don't want to do this. I just show what we um, have now. So we did this for all the sites. So you see some are more QRs, really less samplings. Some have really more samples, and uh, yeah, that's uh, how the data looks like. And then, because uh, we said we related to archaeology for this uh, presentation, we derived the for for three time slices we defined like uh, 2,500, 3,500, and 5,000 uh, before today, and. Uh, got uh, these values from this um, yeah, gradient curves along these computed values. 
for, for the time for each of the side. And produce also, because it's so uncertain, just a simple uh, um, interpolation method available in inverse distance weighting uh, interpolation to just show that there are methods, of course, to go into like space and uh, compute values in between. Um, I know about how to uh, correctly um, interpolate temperature, like for example in a, um, a spline uh, um, interpolation with a tension um, estimation according to the DM because of temperature elevation relationship. Um, and for precipitation, there are also lots of um, published um, better interpolation methods, but I won't do this now because uh, um, yeah, the results of the data we have are not um, yeah, giving this. It's just to, to have an idea, we can produce some maps right now with much of uncertainty. So we did this for this time class, and you see, as an example here, it's uh, um, it gets more humid and a bit warmer. Uh, compared between 2,500 and 3,500 and to 5,000 it gets again a bit less humid but um, also the temperature a little, cold, a little bit colder and the, the higher altitudes. So um, here's the uh, archaeology um, data provided uh, by Aspen from the MUSIT data. Oh, sorry, I got uh, called to this one. Um, um, from uh, um, <coughs> provided by uh, Espen Ulleberg from the uh, MUSIT database of the um, um, University of Oslo, of the Museum of Cultural History, Music, uh, University of Oslo. And um, we took just two time slices one for early Neolithic, you see here the fine spots. And has been computed the uh, kernel, kernel density and also point density. And um, for 3,500, the uh, Norwegian Lake Neolithic also some um, fine spots and the same analysis. And we just related them and then if, if we have uh, like the correct, reliable um, highly environment information, we can do a meaningful. Uh, Analysis of this. Now it's just uh, like a proof of concept, how to say, how, how this uh, analysis uh, can work from the workflow. So we have the, the technology to derive the paleo environmental information. We have the archaeological data <coughs> in a database. And uh, when we improve our um, workflow to get more reliable results, we can hopefully also come up in the future with some nice interpretations of, of these uh, relationships. So this is the other time slice, the late Neolithic. And as I said, I will not go into interpreting this, so, but just to show that we can relate them in the GIS. So then um, uh, this is uh, already um, excused for the typos on, the, on this slide I just found before, after I already covered them. Uh, yeah, these are the ideas for the next um, months and the future. We're working on this to um, improve um, the technique, the workflow, uh, get expert feedback from paleontologists to help um, and, um, see where it is correct, these interpretations were not. And how to improve it, um, include more of the sites, of course, um, then, as I said, improve the interpolations. And um, the midterm goal is also to apply this um, modern analog techniques to other parameters like biome classifications, which is uh, like the, the natural choice for flora data, like pollen and uh, also like Köppen-Geiger climate zone classifications. Um, we will use this for another project uh, I work on uh, with colleagues who maybe heard on in uh, other talks yesterday to, to um, then be able to validate this uh, 
uh, other geostatistical method to be applied to um, interpolate um, paleoclimates. And um, we want to use this te technique that I presented here to, to um, validate these uh, geostatistical applications. Um, yeah, as you know, this is this point. And um, yeah, further on, after we have this work over, um, available. I'm aware of uh, spatial temporal interpolation techniques. Uh, there's a great package available in R for doing this, and I'm really looking forward to applying these uh, to these data sets. And uh, but I won't do it before we are having some certainty in our um, uh, analysis of the point first. So one step after another. So. That's it. Uh, thank you for your attention. And uh, I'm ready to answer questions.